Welcome to worship at Christ United Methodist Church. My name is Beth Graverholt, and I'm honored to serve as the associate pastor. And my name is Richard Randolph, and I'm honored to serve as the senior pastor. At Christ UMC, we strive to be a welcoming and affirming community of faith. And that means whatever walk of life you're from, whatever your age, ethnicity, gender identity, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation, we celebrate you because we believe all people are created in the image of God and loved by God for who they are. We hope that you'll financially support the ministries here at Christ United Methodist Church. And you can do so financially by uh, either electro electronically or by a check, and the information should be on a slide in front of you. Thank you again for joining us for worship as we conclude our series, Heaven on Earth, Realizing the Good Life Now, a reflection on the Beatitudes of Jesus. This morning we'll be reflecting on how we can be salt and light in the world. Let us worship. Our scripture today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For the last few weeks, we've been studying the Beatitudes, Jesus' description of who his followers are called to be, who God is blessing, and what the kingdom of God is like. If the Beatitudes provide us knowledge about the kingdom of God and our calling as Jesus' followers, his disciples, then in verses 13 through 16, which follow, Jesus is telling us that the proper response to these blessings is not lofty reflection, but action. When Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything. What he means is that knowledge, faith, or belief without action is an impediment to the kingdom. Just like salt can't flavor or preserve food if it's left in the shaker, all of our knowledge about God, about how to live the good life here and now, can't do the world any good if we are keeping it to ourselves or if we only share it with other people who are already salty, who already look and act and think like we do. If we only live like the gospel, the good news of Jesus is real on Sunday morning at church. It's like we're adding more and more salt to our cookie dough. Eventually you ruin it and you don't have enough salt when you need it for the next recipe. Besides providing flavor, salt is also a preservative, an especially necessary one in Jesus' world, where they didn't have refrigeration. Salting your meat kept it from spoiling, and that was the difference between having food for your family or going hungry. Like salt which keeps meat from going bad, Jesus is trying to tell his followers that the knowledge they have about the kingdom, about the work God is blessing in the world, has the potential to make a difference, even to save lives when they put it into action. And just in case the disciples didn't understand that metaphor, Jesus decides to put it another way, saying, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In this passage, when Jesus says bushel basket, he isn't referring to a unit of measurement. He's simply referring to a vessel big enough to cover a lamp. He describes a light not snuffed out, but covered up. The light is not extinguished, but only rendered ineffective. And it leads me to wonder, what are the bushel baskets that we let cover our light as individuals today or as a community of faith? It seems to me that the biggest bushel basket covering our light is the current American narrative about Christianity itself, the narrative dominated by those who portray Christianity as an exclusive club that's more about political power, wealth, and narrow-mindedness than it is about showing mercy, working for justice, or being peacemakers. I found myself and others saying things like, I'm not sure I want to identify as a Methodist if some parts of the denomination are excluding LGBTQ folks. Or I'm not sure I even want to identify as a Christian when nationalists are violently storming the US Capitol carrying giant crosses. But if we allow, these hateful and false narratives about what Christianity is to silence us, to serve as bushel baskets covering up the true light of Christ, the loving and peaceful and inclusive light, then we're part of the problem because we've allowed the light of Christ within us to be covered by those who seem to have a louder voice. We've let it be covered by our own fear of what other people will think of us. Jesus calls us to put the Beatitudes into action, to let our light shine before others, because now and in every age, the world needs the light of God's radical love, a light that reflects God's presence with and blessing upon those who mourn, those who are poor in spirit, those who are meek, who show mercy, who hunger and thirst for God's justice, who make peace, 
and those who are persecuted. And in our community of faith, there are many opportunities to be that salt and light, to get outside the four walls of the building and share our light with others. From the garden which the youth have started to help feed the community, to the many missions of our United Methodist Women Group, the advocacy work of our Justice Ministry League, the teams that go to Matt Talbot to serve meals to the homeless every month. There are countless ways to put the Beatitudes into action in the way that Jesus talked about. Personally, I get to spend most of my days here at Connection Point in the Open Shelf Food Pantry. Connection Point's our mission outreach center where in the last five years, we fed over 45,000 people through this pantry where we're helping new immigrants and refugees get settled and find a community here in Lincoln, where we're giving college students a welcoming place to worship. And on a regular basis, I'm astounded by the light of Christ shining through the volunteers here. For example, one volunteer who noticed on a rainy day that a visitor in the pantry didn't have an umbrella. So the next week, the volunteer bought him one. Or another volunteer who befriended an international student and learned that he had the goal of getting his driver's license but didn't have access to a car that he could learn in. So our volunteer took the student out to practice driving for months in his personal car before finally going with him to take the test and celebrating with him when he passed. These are just a few of many examples of God's people stepping out of their comfort zones and being generous with their lives. Not just talking about what it's like to be salt and light, but really going out and doing it. My question for you today is, how are you going to do it? How will you be salt and light in our world? Because when we open up to others, when we're generous with our lives, when we share the good news that we know, it prompts others to open up with God. And in this way, we are helping to establish the good life, the kingdom of heaven right here on earth for all of God's children. Amen.
Would you please pray with me? Loving God, on a hillside in Galilee, your son Jesus called us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Give us the strength and wisdom to become the people of the Beatitudes in our day, so that our words may season the world with the flavor of the gospel, and our lives may be shining examples of Jesus, who is the true light of the world. Please be with all in our community of faith and around the world who are suffering from illness, injury, loneliness, and grief, that they might feel your comforting and healing presence with them. We pray for all healthcare workers as hospitals begin to fill once again with COVID-19 patients. We ask that you would give them strength, compassion, and perseverance to live into the calling you have given them to care for others. We pray that you would help all people to take responsible actions to prevent further illness and loss of life. This week, we especially lift up our children and youth as they return to school. We pray that you would go with them, guiding them and protecting them, that you would be with our teachers who are instilling in them lessons that will last a lifetime. Help the adults in this community of faith to always support these young people and those who care for them. Help us to be a listening ear, an encouraging word, or simply a caring presence whenever we are needed. And Lord, we pray that our scope of concern would expand to the whole world, not only in prayer, but in action. Just as salt cannot season and preserve if it stays in its shaker, help us to remember that we cannot live as true disciples unless we step outside of our comfort zones, out of our homes and church buildings, and into the community to engage with neighbors and strangers alike, that we might help to illuminate the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus taught us is here and now. We ask all of this in his name as we pray the prayer which he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now will you join me in a final blessing as our service concludes. May all of us seek the good life through our discipleship with Jesus Christ. And in our discipleship, may we always seek God, act inclusively, serve others, and work for justice. Amen.